Now, unless you've recently Marie Kondoed your whole place, chances are you've got a couple things or maybe a lot of things in your closet that you're really not wearing anymore that you need to get rid of. So I know I definitely have things that I need to get rid of and in an effort to you know have a more curated closet, I decided I need to consign some things. And so I've decided to try my hand at consigning with the real real. So the reason I decided that is because a lot of these items are more like contemporary items. You know, they're not necessarily like luxury designers, but they're things like Diane von Furstenberg, Millie Parker, Kate Spade, stuff like that. And I don't really feel like going through all the effort of selling it myself. So this way I can go, you know, get everything, hopefully at least a fair amount of the items, take them out of the real real, and anything that they don't want, I'm just gonna go ahead and donate. So the good thing about the real real is that they have, I think, three different ways on how you can consign. So if you go online, you can either schedule a time for pickup where they come to your home, pick up your items, and take care of the whole consignment process there. Or you can mail in your items if you're comfortable doing that. I just did not feel like packaging up all this stuff. And then the third option is if there's a the real real location, you know, within an accessible distance to you, like there is one in San Francisco close to me, you can actually go to the boutique and either just drop off your items to consign or set up like a full consignment appointment where they do everything live with you. So I just booked an appointment to drop off my items and then I'm gonna go do some shopping and I'm not sure if they consign, you know, same day or if I have to come back in a few days. So I figured I would kind of vlog the whole process to let you know what it's like because I'm a big fan of shopping on the real real. If you watch my channel, you know I've got quite a few items from there and I'll link one for you but I've never sold with them before. So I wanted to see what this process is like with these, you know, less expensive items because I do also have some more luxury pieces, some from Prada, some from Burberry that I'm thinking about getting rid of. And if I like the process with the real real with these other items, then I'll take those more big ticket items to them, you know, in the near future. And I figured first things first, I'll just show you a couple of the items that I'm consigning so you can kind of get a feel for what I'm trying to get rid of. And some of them are just kind of funny to laugh at, like things that I have. This first item that I have is a chain mail party box clutch from Diane von Furstenberg. And uh, for those of you that know a lot more about me, you'll know that I actually interned at Diane von Furstenberg in their print design department when I was in college, when I went to school for fashion design. So so DVF like has this like big piece of my heart. I did not get this when I was an intern. I got this years later and it's a really fun, you know, going out item. But the truth of the matter is that I just, I don't really wear it. Like I'm just not crazy about this shade of yellow. It's got a bit too much blue in it. And it's also like a milky yellow. So I don't know. I really, I just, I don't wear it, but it's in great condition. Other than the chain, the chain's like a little, I don't know. I don't know if I love that, but whatever. So. We're going to sell that. Um, I actually do have one luxury item, this pair of Fendi flats. These are from my time in New York City when I was a shoe buyer. I just have a lot of great memories in these shoes. I remember just like running around town thinking I was like hot-ish wearing like my Fendi flats, but I've like worn these to the bone. So I'm not gonna wear them anymore, but I think there are a lot of vintage lovers out there who would really like these shoes. <laughs> this is a metallic silver mock croc belt from Ralph Lauren. And when I was young, I was, I guess I thought I was cool, like that I could wear bright silver belts, but like at this age, I do not want to be attracting a bunch of attention to my waistline. So we are definitely gonna let this go. Now in terms of like the ready to wear pieces. Oh, so this first set is from the brand Parker. And it is a really beautiful sequined tank top and skirt set. But look at the size of this skirt. Oh my God, who do I think I am? Like, <laughs> college Lily would have worn this. 30 something Lily is not gonna wear this. As you can see, it's still got the tags on it. I've never worn it. And I am most likely never going to wear it. Also because, you know, sequins are tough. Like they catch on things. I just, I also really don't see an occasion where I'm gonna wear it. So I'm going to let this go. Also, oh God, this hurts because this is another thing with tags on it. This is a dress from Joie. And it is a beautiful, beautiful floral print fabric dress. It's a wrap dress. And on the back, it has this really elegant keyhole that I really like, but it's just a little bit too big in the butt, so it kind of sags when I wear it, because like, 
I don't fill it out, story of my life. So because I don't love the fit of it, I've never reached for this. I always reach for something else. So I really need to just kind of let this one go. Now the next item here is from BCBG Max Azria. This is, oh, it's got a bit of lint on it. This is also actually from my time in New York City. I loved this jacket. I actually still do love this jacket, but what's weird is like over the years, for some reason, the size of the lapel has really started to bother me. It feels too small. Like I feel like the lapel should be like this size. And so because of that, like I literally never wear this jacket and I should, it's a great jacket. And this is actually totally my style nowadays, especially with like the gunmetal hardware, but I don't. So time to let it go. And then the last thing that I have is this beautiful silk romper from Yumi Kim. You know, I'm just not wearing a bright orange floral romper these days. Like that is just not something that I'm gonna wear. I've, I've kept it for years because I was like, maybe I'll wear it on vacation again, but I've not worn this in many years, so time to let it go. And also it's in great condition. So like, I feel like this is a really good piece to consign. So I have a whole suitcase full of items and maybe like 20 pairs of shoes. They're, they're nothing like fab. They're just, you know, regular old everyday shoes. So we're gonna go, I'll vlog so you can see kind of what the process is like. And you know, I will do an update later on down the road to let you know how things went, you know, did the items sell? What did they sell for? Was I happy with the whole process? Things like that. And of course I'll keep you updated on if I do decide to consign, you know, those more expensive like luxury items. And the luxury items that I'm looking to get rid of, they're all in amazing, like, like new or basically new condition, but they're just things that I really, I just, I don't wear. And especially for like luxury items, if you're not wearing them, nor do you ever plan to wear them, it's just time to let them go. So let's go to the real real and see what the process is like. Okay, so we just parked, but if anyone knows San Francisco, we know that we are a bit far from the real real store. So I just called them and left them a voicemail to let them know that I'm running a few minutes late. So I'm gonna hustle over there. I'm not gonna vlog as I walk because I've got like a bunch of bags. It's gonna be too tough. So hopefully they will still see me even though I'm gonna be like five to seven minutes late. Okay, let's go. Okay, so I just dropped my things off and they gave me a whole explanation on the commission structure and all that, which I'll talk to you guys about later. And there's obviously a lot of stuff for them to go through. So they are you know, packaging everything up. They put like everything in dust bags and stuff like that, which I thought was really nice. And then they'll uh, go through everything. And then I think starting in like five to seven business days, I'll start to see stuff um, populating in my account. Like if you look in their app to see like what they're selling. And then they'll also let me know what items are being returned to me, like items that either they didn't want or got rejected for some reason. So I'm gonna go shop a little bit and then I'm gonna go back to pick up my suitcase and all my other bags. So overall, I mean, it was pretty easy. Like they were really nice. So I don't know. easy so far. We'll see if they even end up taking stuff though. Maybe they hate everything I brought. I don't know. All right, now that we are back home and it is actually a few days later, hence, you know, my straight hair. I just did not have time to finish filming when we went to drop off those items this past weekend. But what I wanted to do was walk you through some of the extra details about what you need to know if you're going to consign items with the real real and things that I've learned so far throughout this process. So. First things first, before you decide to consign with the Real Real, you need to go onto their website and look at their list of brands that they are currently accepting. Now, I made the mistake of just Googling, not Googling, of just searching on their website for a brand name if there was an item that I had that I wanted to sell and I wasn't sure if that was a brand they were taking or not. And if I saw items with that brand name, then I assume like, okay, check, like that's a brand that they sell. That's not actually how it works. And it makes sense, like as trends change, you know, as brands go in and out of popularity, they change the brands that they're accepting, but it doesn't mean that they've necessarily sold through all of the inventory that they have of a particular brand. So just make sure to check on their website beforehand of all the brands that they're currently accepting, because if your item is not on that brand list, they're not gonna take it. In terms of how the process works, 
you saw that I went to the store and they packaged up all my items in dust bags and then they send them to an authentication center where they go through and they inspect all of the items for their condition, make sure they meet the criteria of, you know, items that they're currently accepting. And then within five to seven days, you'll start seeing under your The Real Real account, either in the app or on the website, you can start seeing which items were accepted which items are going to be mailed back to you. And then for the items that are accepted, over time you'll see, you know, the photo populate. I think you have to accept the selling price and then the items can start selling on the website. The sales associate at The Real Real told me it can take up to about a month for an item to go live on the site. So I just would say, don't expect it to be a quick process. You know, it's, it's something that takes a little while, obviously. And once the items go live, obviously you like, you agree to the price, but they can be put on sale over time. So the price that you may receive in terms of your commission may vary a little bit if the price does end up going on sale. Now, for the commission structure, I am going to read from this little brochure because it's I can't memorize it and you'll understand. So for all items with a resale list of less than $145, you get 40% commission. For items that have a resale list price of 146 to 195, so basically less than $200, then you would get 50% commission. For items above that, if you're just starting to sell with the real real, you will come in at a, the real real insider, and they kind of tier your commission structure into three different tiers. So. For all items, you know, above $195, you will start as a the real real insider and you will get 55%. You will get 55% commission until you earn up to $1500 in annual net sales. And once you reach that $1500 threshold in a given year, then you move up to the next tier which is the icon. Then at the icon level, you start earning 60% commission and you'll earn 60% commission when you have sold $1,501 to $9,999 in annual net sales, and you'll keep getting your 60%. So basically up until you hit 10 Gs. Once you hit 10 Gs, then you progress to the third and the highest level of the rewards membership, and you become a VIP, and you start getting 70% on anything in excess of $10,000 that you sell in that year. Now, regardless of what tier you fall in, there are certain categories of items and certain price points of items that do actually earn higher commission, regardless on if you are an insider or if you are a VIP. And so those categories include handbags, watches, jewelry, art, home goods, and men's sneakers. Now, depending on the dollar amount, it changes the tier amount. So that's kind of the commission that you can earn. And in terms of how you get paid, by default, when you can sign items for the first time, you're set up to receive a check via the mail. Now, if you like receiving mailed checks, then you don't have anything to worry about. However, if you want to get direct deposit or site credit, you need to go in and provide, you know, your direct deposit information or select site credit. And so that way you've got your payment information established beforehand. So that way, as soon as the items sell, you get your money immediately, which I think is really nice. So I did go and check in the app to see if anything had started populating since it's been a few days and it actually has. So I saw that there were certain items that had been accepted, certain items that were not accepted for different reasons. You know, it said like discoloration, excessive wear, a not accepted brand, and they did not take my Fendi flats. It said that they were discolored, which is fair. I really wore through those shoes, so I totally understand. And so I did say that some of those not accepted items were shipped back to me. I think they kind of go through it in batches, right? So some items are on their way back to me and I'm going to keep looking over time to see, you know, how the items populate in the app. I'll do like a part two video to kind of let you know what the second half of the process was. But I just thought it'd be helpful for you to know that at any given point in time, once you've consigned items with the real real, they're still yours. You still own them. So you can request them back. They gave me a card of my, I don't know if it was like my consignment manager or luxury manager, whatever their title was. They gave me their card. So they said, if at any point in time you want one of your items back, you know, if you're not cool with like the new sale price or something, all you have to do is just request the item back and we'll return it to you. The only scenario where we can't do that is if, you know, there are these fringe cases where if someone clicks by at the exact same time, you know, that you request for the item to be returned to you, then they have to honor the sale to the customer. 
So I think that's totally fair. Makes sense to me. If I've already consigned something, I've already made the decision to get rid of it. So at that point, I don't think you can really expect to like be able to take it back out of the hands of someone who bought it. That's just my take though. So overall, the process was really easy, really seamless. Uh, it does make a lot more sense now that some of the items were sent back because I was really confused when I was in the store because they were like, as long as they're the right brands, we'll take them. I was like, regardless of the condition. And the guy in the store was like, yeah, we'll take them. He must not realize that once they get to the authentication center, they definitely do go through and, and look at the quality and the condition of them as they should. I was expecting that in the store, they would go through the condition of the item. So that way they would already hand some back to me. So it seems, I don't know, for the real, it seems like it's a lot of effort for them to send all the items to the authentication center. I feel like they could save some money if they had some like in-store folks to kind of help parse through, you know, what is a possibility and what we're definitely not gonna sell, but I don't know, they didn't do that. So that was one thing that I found kind of interesting. But other than that, the process seemed relatively easy, straightforward and simple. And I really like that I've got now a consignment profile set up. So if I want to, I can now choose to go back to the store, consign some more items, send some more in, or you know, have someone come by for pickup. And one other thing that they do do is that they do do like handbag valuation and I believe like fine jewelry valuation appointments. So if you're not sure if you're ready to sell, but you wanna go in and see kind of what the general price would be, you can set up an appointment to do that. And I think that's really nice that you know kind of what you're getting into. Cause let's be honest, sometimes we will part with something if we know we can make X amount of money, but if we will only make, you know, like peanuts in terms of money, like we might just wanna keep the item. So that makes sense too. So overall, I have really enjoyed the process of selling with the real real so far. We will see once the items start selling, if everything feels right to me, am I gonna make decent money off these items or not? I'm not sure, only time will tell. And I'll do a part two to follow up with kind of how my selling process went with the real real. So, I know that was a lot of information. If you have any questions or anything that I didn't cover, put it in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer. Obviously I'm a newbie, this is my first time, so I don't have all the answers, but I will try my very best to answer any questions for you. And let me know also if you've consigned anything with the real real and kind of what you thought about the process or any of these other sites like Fashion File or whatever, like kind of what's it like, what's the marketplace out there? This is my first time really doing it online. I've only ever done it with like a local consignment store. So I don't know, we'll see how it goes. Now, if you found this video helpful, be sure to give it a like, just like give it a little thumbs up. And also if you wanna get more content about all things shopping and selling delivered straight to you, be sure to subscribe to my channel and turn on that notification bell so that way you'll know every single time I post a new video, including part two of this video in the not too distant future. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Lily. I can't wait to see you next time. Bye everyone.